How are we doing, guys? We are back again with the transfer live show. We eventually got there. We eventually got there. Apologise, guys. Bit of an error on my end. Had to switch cameras up. It's all right, though. We've got there in the end. And Mr. Phil Miles joins us yet again as he's compiled a fantastic detailed list on right wingers and left sided central midfielders. How are you doing, mate? I'm still very, very, very happy. How, how are you doing? To be honest, I, I'm, I'm still that happy watching the replay of your face when, when that second goal goes in and Joe's sat there like, don't ruin it for me. Don't ruin it for me. And you're just there like... <laughs> I'm just like, he's just said don't ruin it oh, for him. You have to just having a whale of a time as well. <laughs> It's the way it goes, mate. It's the way it goes. On the watch along, sometimes not everything's in sync. She had to in the room, and then I saw those comments coming in, and I thought, nah, nah, if someone's messing about here, someone's messing about here. And I kind of heard it yeah. in the other room. I could just hear it in the other room, what was going yeah. on. And I was like, ah, we have scored. Yeah, we have done it. And oh, man, it's it's a strange world. It's a strange world when things like that happen. But, um, but it's because it almost feels like wrong to talk about transfer targets where we just picked up such a good win <laughs> it feels like we're sort of yeah. saying well done on winning at city lads well done on winning at the future now let's get rid of you all <laughs> but you're off you're off now lads you're getting replaced with um roma five right in that lot and um and yeah but we're going to talk about obviously a couple of targets and just give us a bit of background mate give us a bit of background yeah so guys if, if you're watching and you haven't watched one of these shows before um, or obviously, if you have watched one of these shows before, you can go to my Twitter feed or my Patreon page and you can get on these articles that we're going to be showing you the graphics from. Um, I've used stats from FB Ref and I've got transfer market values from Transfer Market. I've just looked at the players in our team and I've tried to use myself knowledge of what Bielsa wants from these players in certain positions and compare our current players to comparable players in Europe's top five leagues. So if you've got any suggestions, as usual, bang them in the comments. I'll happily update everything after the show if you've found some that we haven't spoken about. Um, but yeah, I've, I've just, obviously with that central midfield position, which is now kind of Stuart Dallas's, um, I've compared everybody previously to Matthias Click and his numbers. And with the right wing position, I've been comparing people to Rafinha and the numbers that he puts up. But, you know, like with Rafinha on the right wing, we're looking at people that can dribble, that can create with passes and create with dribbles. And we don't really care as much about whether he's good at tackling. We care about whether he's good at pressing. That's key for virtually every position on the pitch in a Bielsa system. But we're looking at certain individual qualities that match to individual positions and then comparing players across the top five leagues against our players and seeing who we could possibly bring in if, Hypothetically, if someone was to leave, we've heard there could be bids for either Helda Costa or Rafinha. I don't see us being bullied into selling either if we don't want to, but if we were to upgrade, that's why we're looking at these players. And the same in midfield, like like we've put on, on the header for this, Pablo Hernandez is probably going to leave this summer. And, you know, have we already replaced him? Maybe, but if we haven't, who could we possibly bring in that's a younger version and might do the same job hopefully over a number of years well yeah we're gonna we are gonna yeah look at that of course i apologize guys i'm trying to share the screen but i can't quite share the screen so we're gonna have to do this by a screenshot i don't know if you can see that particularly well in fact that's not going to be too great is it let me just try and i'm not sure why it's not on the share the screen it's um it's all gone wrong it's all gone wrong guys as always but um we'll get there in a second we'll get there in a second <laughs> the risk of going live sometimes when you try and do stuff like this, it's like, oh, and it won't let you share your screen. I'm going to let me see. Oh, let, me sh let me show Phil's article. Why is it, why is it being awkward for me now? Uh, apologies for this, guys. Um, we will get there in a second. But, mate, just speak a little bit more about, obviously, yesterday, you know, in terms of can yeah, I've seen a couple of results go for us as well. Yeah. A couple of results go for us too. I mean, how high can we finish now, in your opinion? I think, to be honest, that, that's something that links us into today's show really well and links into this topic of talking about transfers really well. I, everyone's talking about Bielsa and that new contract at the moment, aren't they? I, I don't know if you've heard the same whispers of me, but <clears throat> I've heard whispers that it's a two-year contract this time. It's not a one-year contract. Um, and, and I was having a conversation with my brother last night uh, when we were watching Match of the Day about Bielsa staying one year 
and staying two years is a difference between the person that takes over after him and the long-term ambition and the way we do everything. So if, if Bielsa leaves at the end of next season, me and Joe have said on previous shows, I could see us going for someone like a Gabriel Ainsa. But if Bielsa was to stay next season and the season after, if you look at what we've done so far, if you look at transfer business this summer and who we we think we're going to bring in and the kind of player and the the quality and caliber of player that we're bringing in what what's what's to stop us pushing for Europe not next season but the season after if he's staying for 2 years and then once you've got those caliber of players in and if Bielsa eventually does leave we go from looking at a Gabriel Ainse to perhaps looking at a Simeone or a Pochettino i know people might think that's ludicrous right now but i'm talking 2 or 3 years time Bielsa's staying for 2 years that's what I've heard. That's what I believe. It's it's kind of the signals he's given us. So I would say that he's staying. And while he's staying, we should be looking to build for the future. So looking forward, we've got a load of targets to look at tonight um, on the right wing. And obviously in centre midfield, if we can sort of... If we can, if we can do what we did yesterday, next season better our results that we had against the top six next season. There's no reason why we couldn't be aiming for Europe next season. And some people, Chris Kelly, you're here, mate. You said it last night. If if an English team wins the, Euro the Europa League and the Champions League, it's eighth. That's all you need. We're only two points off it now. I'm not saying we're doing it. I'm not going to go that far. There but you, are. There you, are. you say we're going to do it, Phil. You know we're going to do it. Hey. Well, we need, what is it, 12 points to be the best newly promoted side in Premier League history? Is it that many? Oh, yeah, yeah, because Wolves, Wolves. Of Wolves. Made so, we need 10, 10 now to beat Sheffield United's from next season. I didn't expect us to beat that. But with the City result now, I think we'll top it. And then, if we could be the best newly promoted side in, in Premier League history, it'd be fantastic, whether we got Europe or not. I thought, you know, it sounds pretty... It's going to be hard, obviously, to get 12 more points. It's obviously four wins. Um, don't want to sound too like Michael Owen there. But, but yeah, four wins out of seven games. It's going to be difficult for any team. Um, but <laughs> After yesterday. Yeah, exactly. When you're beating the best, all of a sudden yeah. it looks that much more doable, doesn't it? But, um, but guys, I apologise. I can't share my screen. I'm not sure what's going on here. I think um, StreamYard's let me down a little bit here, to be honest. It's, not, it's genuinely not my fault, this one, guys. It's not letting me share the screen, which is annoying. So Go put a bigger fire. collar shirt on and it might listen to I you. I know, it's fuming, it's fuming. It's even said to me now, it says, no collar, no shit, no screen share. So, um, oh, it's frustrating, right? We need to get into this tonight. We need to get into yeah. this tonight anyway. So, let's, uh, I, it's not, can we see that? Can we see, this is, this is, Honestly, what is going on here with this stream yard? Tonight? I mean, we can, we can, we can go with it. We can talk through it, can't we? Yeah, we'll have it. Okay, yeah. well, yeah, I anyone you want to start off with to talk about first of all, mate? I think obviously it's best to start off looking at Rafinha's numbers, to be honest, mm. um, and then what what we compare to that. So pressing, you'll see. So obviously, anything that is above what Rafinha has done, they go green. Anything that is underperforming what Rafinha does is in red. So you will you will struggle to find anybody that yes on the left hand side of the columns you got dribble percentage and the progression per 90 from those dribbles you you won't struggle to find people that can dribble better than Rafinha or have better dribbling stats anyway than Rafinha but someone that has all four that can actually match his pressing numbers and actually match what he creates with his passing the shot creating actions that's where you're going to struggle to be able to find somebody that's going to come into this team and actually either replace Rafinha if he's sold, which obviously we hope he isn't, um, but also compete with him. Um, we have seen Jackie in particular posting numbers this season that are impressive. Helder Costa has been putting in performances here and there that were impressive, but I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind. Our, our best winger is Rafinha quality-wise in, in what he brings. No, no doubt about it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not. I mean, obviously, as much as I look, uh, as much as I love Jack Harrison, I think defensively he offers more. I don't think there's anyone all yeah. round that's offering. To be honest, outside the top ten, I don't think anyone. Any, I can't think of any wingo who's really offering as what a senior offers week in week out. I can't think of yeah. anyone off the top of my head to be honest. But, uh, but I mean, is there anyone on this target list that you want to go through first to talk about? 
I mean, we did the the left wing show the last last time. I know I, don't, I think it was a couple of weeks ago now. And obviously, there's a couple of names on here that we we spoke about on there. We spoke about Jens Peter Halgo and we spoke about Takafusa Kubo. And the, those two guys we said on that show would be fantastic loan signings for us, short term and long term. Because you know, lo loan deals these days aren't just right. You come for six months and then you disappear. Like Jackie's been in for three years, and hopefully that's going to be made permanent this summer. We believe it will be. So there's no reason why you can't start off looking at young talent and then getting them in temporarily and then trying to get that to lead to a permanent deal. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, could it be a loan deal, do you think, that if we do go for a right winger as back up for Rafinha? It wouldn't surprise me because you know you know what Victor Orta is like, especially towards the back end of our time in the championship, everything was loan deals with, with an option to buy and I had someone ask me the other day about why why are you still just having Jack Harrison on loan? Why why haven't you just bought him? And obviously the first time we agreed that loan to buy with City, it was eight million quid. Then the second season they put it up to a million, it went to ten million quid. And then the third season they put it up to eleven million quid. For anyone that doesn't understand why we've done that, it's just so obviously the amount of money we spent this summer on the likes of Rafinha, Lorente, Cock, and Rodrigo, that money that we spent on those four players wouldn't have been able to be available if we didn't save that money from Harrison in a weird way. So we've saved that money there. We've committed to spending it this summer, but this summer we have a massive financial income in comparison to anything we've ever had before from that Premier League TV money. So that's why that's the, that deal has been stalled. Higher we finish, more money <clears throat> we get. Exactly. Simple as I that. Mean, the, the first show we ever did on on the transfer show, I, I broke down why I'd done these articles and why I'd got into it. And it was basically that Leeds United are guaranteed a, a pretty much 100 million quid just for finishing bottom. Then you get an extra, I think it's just under 2 million, so like 1.97 million per position. We joked on that on that show that it we were 12th, I think, at the time. So we were looking at bringing in maybe about 118 million. And then now, Top 10 for me is quite realistic. Like, we're ninth at the moment. And, you know, we've joked about Europe. Imagine if we did finish eighth. You know, you get extra money for being on telly more than 10 times. Every single team in the league has now been on telly more than 10 times because every live game's had to be televised. There is a shed load of money coming into Leeds United this summer. And I don't think we'll spend as much as we did last summer, but I think there'll be three top quality signings at least. And I think there'll be about 80 million quid spent. And you can... We saw last summer as well with the under 23s, there was a massive influx of talent coming in in that, that sense as well. So, you know, I've seen people talking about Majueke, that's the England under 17 winger in the Netherlands. I, I don't, I do think we'll get priced out of that one, to be honest. And, but I, I do also think there will be some more under 23 signings this summer. I think Victor Otto loves a good under 23 signing. I mean, it's worth mentioning the fact that it's, it's not something we like to think about. It's definitely not something I like to think about or any Leeds fan likes to think about. It's a possibility that Rafinha might well move on in the summer. You know, if a, if a top six team comes in with big money, we might struggle to keep him. That's the reality of the situation any newly promoted Premier League club is in or any Premier League club outside the top six is in. I mean, if that was to happen, mate, I think I genuinely think some of the names on this list all of a sudden become more realistic because we've got... Yeah, a big, a big budget to play around with. Yeah, you know, some of these names was become a lot more feasible. You know, I yeah, I know obviously the likes of Bakayo Saka. Of course, that's probably the, not going to happen. That's in real no. Arsenal aren't going to sell. But no. some of the other names on there might all of a sudden become more yeah. doable. I mean, there are there's a lot of players on this list. We, we've had it in different episodes where people have gone, "We're never going to get him." They're, they're not on the list because this is the list of people that I want or the list of people I think we get. It's a list of people that are apparently most comparable to our players. So this is the kind of player we're looking for. So I don't think for a second Leeds United are even bothering to look at Bakayo Saka, to be honest. I don't think he fits the different criterions that we're looking at for us to even bother looking at him to speak about him. So he's on there simply for context. Um, but no, with the idea of Rafinha leaving, um, I don't think he will. I don't think if a bid comes I agree. in... I agree. I don't think we'll be bullied into selling, but that might not happen this summer. It, be, it may well happen in the future. If he continues on the trajectory that he's shown this season, you never know. And like I said on a previous show, the thing that 
Leeds United are doing with their transfer model. I, I did a big article on the comparisons to Manchester City building up to this weekend. And in football terms, I believe we are trying to keep up with Man City. We're trying to emulate them and do what they've done over a long period of time. But transfer-wise, I think we're actually looking more at the Leicester City transfer model. Like We, we find talent abroad, like a Kante, a Riyad Mahrez, a Fafana. We bring them in for cheap. And then we do what they've done with Harry Maguire. We sell it on for 80 million quid. Riyad Mahrez, we sell it on for 60 million quid. We find these people cheap. We pay them very small money wage-wise. And then we sell them on for stupid money. And that helps us develop. You buy, almost sell one by four, isn't it? Yeah. That's how Leicester go about it. Yeah. They sell a superstar, they buy another four. Yeah, who, look who at top one the, the Gareth Bale deal. deal all those years ago. Exactly, exactly. But it's much, hopefully much better than that if Leeds were to yeah. sell Rafinha in terms if of... If we were to sell not, Rafinha, you've got to think right now, if someone puts a bid in, if it's under 50 million quid, you can bat it away straight away, to be honest. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking much higher. I'm thinking much higher. I'm thinking at least 60, 65. In terms of his age as well, he's at a good age yeah. in terms of for improvement. But uh, Mega King Richard... You're, um, you're very lucky that Joe Wayman's not on this yeah. tonight because Wayman does tend to get very much, um, from time to time, he does tend to, um, you know, react to some of these. But, um, but yeah, a bit of fishing, a bit of fishing there off Meg King Richard. Come on, man. Come on. Rafinha. I, I, I did is... voice frustrations about him yesterday after the City get, weirdly enough. Um, I think with Rafinha... And, and you do get this with players like him, flair players, creative players. He's got that pass, like a Messi kind of pass. I'm, me and you, we both love Messi. We've never hidden it. Like Messi's passing, he can do things that we can't imagine doing. And he sees passes that none of us ever see. And Rafinha, I'm not going to compare him quality-wise to Messi, but he's out of our team, he's the one that has that pass. He has that path that nobody expects and it just goes into places that you don't scientifically explain to yourself how that's got there. But for me, he tries to do that in our defensive third and he can put us in, in dangerous positions. Thankfully, it didn't yesterday. But if he doesn't do that, we don't talk about him the way we talk about him. So it, it's a dangerous balance. It's which way you want to go with it. Most of I us kind of him, think... But- he missed that chance deliberately against City yesterday, just to <laughs> just to just to take the interest off him, just to take the interest mm. off him, just to make life easier for us. I'm only messing, I'm only messing. But what's um, that? Be Sixty-five million quid? No, no, pal, I'd have scored. <laughs> we're messing, we're messing. In case anyone does react to that, in case anyone does react to that, but um, but Joe and Mega King Richard are having a row with the comments, which is, which is pretty funny to be fair. Um, <laughs> I'm just seeing some of the comments coming in. Um, the new hat's getting a bit of stick as well. The new hat's getting a bit of stick, but I, I like getting stick. You know, I like getting stick. It's part and parcel of the game. But um, <laughs> some of these comments coming in. But um, is there anyone else you want to mention on that list? Because Suso is someone I want to talk about, mate. Um, obviously yeah. of Sevilla. Yeah. Um, Chris Kelly. Chris Kelly. I think said before that he thinks I look like him. I think that's what he was kind of hinting at. I don't know if I'm right in saying that, but. Um, but oh, I, mate, I, 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 so many lookalike ones for you. When we played West Ham, my best mate was just texting me the whole like, whole game, like, please tell Oscar he looks like Fabianski. Fabianski. <laughs> uh, that's all right. That's all right. That's not too bad. Harry Maguire is the worst I've ever had. That, that, yeah, that was, I can um, imagine that one hurts. That, that, was a, that was a, yeah, that wasn't particularly fun getting that one. Anyway, anyway, Suso. Suso at Sevilla. Yeah. Actually tops your list, mate. Tops your list on right wingers. Yeah. Tell me, t- tell me what's impressed you about Suso. I think a lot more technical, you know, for yeah. a typical kind of Spanish winger in terms of likes the ball to his feet. Yeah. Can I don't know whether it is the La Liga thing, you know, because the ones that I seem to have gone for on here are just La Liga wingers. Like, I love it. Well, you're, li- you're listening to an um, absolute La Liga. Well, you're talking to an absolute La Liga fanatic here, mate. Yeah. So it's all good for me, mate. It's all good no, for me. I know we were both bit- watching the game last night. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. The best yeah. league in the world is La Liga. You know, it's a Premier League, this. Title race at the moment. Could exactly. go anywhere. Exactly. It is. Um, if it wasn't for Leeds, honestly, I, I genuinely don't think I'd watch that much Premier League at all, to be fair. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but some of the comments I'm, I'm, I'm not just... fully there with you. I, I'd still watch the Premier League, but I'll, I do like La Liga. Mainly for Barcelona and for Messi, but um, there are other players there where from my obsession with Messi and deciding that since 
his retirement is coming closer, whether it's... I, I, I actually think he'll stay at Barca now. I think he's going to be there next season. But the idea that he might not be has encouraged me to try and watch every game that he's still got left. So whenever he's playing, I'll always try and watch that. But because I'm watching him, I'm, that's where I see Cuba. That's where I see... I know there was rumours a while ago about Lucas Vasquez and obviously like at first I poo-pooed it and I was like, nah, it's not happening. And then do the work behind this and he he comes out quite high as to what we're looking for and what, what matches up quite well. So the likes of Suso and Lucas Vasquez, I, I think they're both quite similar other than the fact I think Vasquez is maybe better defensively. I don't know if the numbers actually back that up, but I feel like He's been played in like a wing back kind of position at times this season for Madrid, hasn't he? And well, he's not. He doesn't start week in week out. Maybe no, he gets to an age where it, he wants to play regular. A player, isn't he? he always has been. Hmm. But, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's. Um, I mean, this the hat's getting so much stick in the comments. I've genuinely not been out golfing today. I've genuinely not played golf today. I get people are saying I got tees in my pocket. I've not, I've not I've got, I've got tracky bottoms on. I've, I'm not, I've not been golfing today. I can absolutely assure you of that, guys. Um, <laughs> the comments today, I mean, they are pretty amazing today. To be fair, you know, it has genuinely made me laugh quite a lot. The comments today, I am loving it. I am loving it. But, um, but yeah, mate. Anyone else you want to talk about in terms of right wingers? I think the obvious one is, is the one that comes out as first suitability wise. There's there's obviously one quality that Rafinha has bought this season that isn't that that has been spoken about quite a lot, I think, by us. And it's that set piece delivery. He's got a wicked set piece delivery. On this list, you will not find uh, to be honest, in most lists, you won't find a better free kick taker than Charhan Oglu at Milan. Like everybody must have seen that clip on YouTube of his. Well, it goes way, just bends all over the place. Bit of reverse swing, bit of yeah. reverse swing on that. Unreal. And like people, I mean, as a Messi fan, I, I, I'll say Messi's one of the best free kick takers in the world. But you know, people always talk about Ronaldo bashing him into a wall. Sorry, Joe. And you know, Messi did it a few times last night. To be fair, I, I sat there thinking, yeah, I'm going to get Leeds United beating City on a Messi free kick all in one day. It didn't happen. He tried one into the wall a few times, but Hakan Charlton Ugly does not hit the wall. He doesn't hit the first man from a corner. When he hits the wall, though, you are in trouble if you're in yeah, that you're wall. you're in trouble, mate. <laughs> it's a, it's, I think it's the closest I've seen modern day to good old school Janino Penambucana. I think that is the closest we are going to get to the free kick master because he's he was the one. But Hakan Charlton Ugly, and it, you don't buy someone just because they can take a free kick, but he offers so much more. He is passing. He's. On this list, that, like I said earlier, you're looking for somebody to try and not just beat Rafinha on the dribbling and the progression stats. You're looking for somebody to actually beat Rafinha on the pressing stats and the shot-creating actions as well. And the only two people that beat him on both categories are obviously Charles Hanoglu and Domenico Berardi, who I, I think we spoke about on the left-wing show anyway. Um, uh, place of Berardi with a Berardi. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could keep the chant, couldn't we? Exactly, right. exactly. It's awesome. worth it for that. You know what I mean? It's worth it just for that. Yeah, I think when you look at Vasquez, obviously Vasquez is towards the higher end of the scale of the kind of age bracket that I think Leeds would go for. I, similar to Chelsea and having that thing with they don't offer anyone over 30 or more than a one-year contract. I'd be really surprised if Victor Orta was looking for anyone over the age of 30 now, which is a little bit why I, I think Joe made that argument with Aguero. But I just don't see it happening. Um, he's he's older than the kind of people we're going to be bringing in. I haven't have Leeds bought in anybody over the age of thirty since Otto took over. Barry Douglas was he over thirty when we signed him? I don't think he's over thirty now, is he? He's thirty. Oh, yeah, 30 31. He's old now. He's old, you know. Now, nah, nah, he's not. Know. He's not that old. He definitely wasn't over. I over think he was close. But even still, like twenty nine, I think is. Kick of the year. Kick of the year is one. Oh, that doesn't count. Well, Nobody. Yeah, yeah. We likes try him. and forget. <laughs> we try and forget about that deal. To be fair, um, I try our hardest. Try our hardest. And goalkeepers are different as well, aren't they? There's a different peak and prime, and we'll let him have it. But yeah, Rodrigo's twenty nine thirty at the moment. So yeah, he's. I think Rodrigo is probably the oldest outfield signing we might have done since Otto took over. But no, I, I think. Again, it, it depends on who leaves for these deals to happen. When you're talking right wing, we know Pablo's leaving. So I actually don't think, as a winger, 
Leeds are looking to replace Pablo as a winger as such. It'd be more the centre mid side of things that we'd be looking to replace him for. But again, with versatility, it, it's one of those things where with Leeds United playing one position just isn't enough. You need to be able to be a Stuart Dallas and play them all and bang into it. The Etihad, obviously. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I love the comments on this. Like, no one's actually talking about any of the players we're talking about. No. He's talked about Mahat, Liam Cooper, <laughs> Messi versus Ronaldo. The league is overrated as a league. I think I've seen on there. Cooper's getting mentioned on here. I love the fact we're doing. <laughs> I don't think anyone's actually listening to us here. I think, it's just a, I think people are just here just for the chat. But guys, if you are yeah. here, whatever reason you're here for, smash the like button, guys. Smash them. I'm just looking at the chat. Like none of the chat is talking about <laughs> any of the players we're talking about. It's just talking about Messi versus Ronaldo. Listen to us, guys. Listen to us. But yeah, um, now there's a good suggestion in there. That one of the latest comments. Um, Obviously, it's been spoken about quite a bit, is Adama Traore. Um, I don't see it, personally. I, I don't see that being the kind of person we're going for. And obviously, we've seen Rafinha bulging out of his shorts. Could you imagine Adama Traore and Rafinha in the same team? I just think it, 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 it'd be too, it's already chaotic enough as it is. I just look at some of these comments coming in. <laughs> but yeah, Troy right? Yeah, I mean, if, I if didn't even replacing... listen to him because I, I, I don't think it's realistic. And no, no, it's not. I think the price tag has changed over the course of this year. I don't think it's anywhere near as high as it would well, have been. Troy not... is kind of the Rafinha on the market. But yeah. Maybe not as good as Rafinha, but he was he was like the player that everyone outside the top six was kind of looking at in in, in the summer, and. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, but but yeah, obviously a year. I think I think on the Fulham games, his first goal contribution all season. I believe. Yeah, like, yeah, was, yeah, it was. That's that's not good enough, is it? That's not good enough, is it? Let's be honest. But um, Sam Maximan yeah. thing. Exactly, so, exactly. So but, think, um, I can't but, see Sam Maximan. I, I don't. I don't think Adama Traore or Sam Maximum. I don't think either of them are Bielsa players. I really don't eat. I, I mean, people might not work enough story, off the ball. But you know the story about Riquelme when Bielsa was manager of Argentina, just bombed him out, didn't want him at all, doesn't like individuals. He's not a fan of individuals whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> some of these comments, some of these comments, I mean, it's, you know, we, we, uh, but anyway, mate, anyway, look, I think we've covered the right wing spot there. But yeah. anything else to add before we move on to. Our central midfielders. No, just move on. <laughs> let's sign Me let's sign Messi. Let's sign Messi. That's the, yeah, yeah. that's the only solution. That's the only way you get better than Rafinha. That's the only way yeah. you get better, isn't it? Really? The, um... the only signing off thing we need to do on right wing is that ideally, fingers crossed, we don't need to deal with it this summer. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those. It's probably. Would you say it's towards the lower end of the scale in terms of priority? Hopefully, if if it's not if bottom. Yeah, if, if Rafinha is never sold, which, you know, that might not happen ever, but if, if Rafinha doesn't go anywhere and held a cost of players like he did yesterday, they're all versatile. <laughs> Realistically, Stuart Dallas is actually joined Leeds United as a right midfielder. So Stuart Dallas can do a job there. We don't, I mean, we were talking the other day about Lad and Dad saying that Tyler Roberts could be put out to the wings. We've got players that can play there. We're not short. Centre back again, we're not short. But yeah, either I'd say necessity wise, wingers and centre backs are the things that we need the least. But at the same time, Victor Orta loves a winger. Exactly. Exactly. Every single window is signed a winger. Or <laughs> if it's Ian Pavanes, if it's Helder Costa. Yeah. If it's almost Dan James, we've signed a winger every yeah. single window. But I think if Rafinha goes, that becomes absolute priority by an absolute million yes. miles, right? The right wing spot. Yeah. It could be a young one. It wouldn't surprise me if there was, because there has to be a winger that signs every single window. So if he got one in on loan to play in the under 23s, that might, that might satisfy his need to do that. Exactly. Exactly. Well, let's go on to centre mids, mate. Let's go on to yeah. centre mids. Because obviously with, um, Explain. Obviously, we're talking about left centre, left side of central midfielders. Explain yeah. what you feel the role is for the left side of central midfielder in this team. First of all, see, I don't. I think the right one 
is either Rodrigo or Tyler, and that's the one that plays higher up and ends up as the kind of eight and ten hybrid. And then you've got the left hand side, which is your Mateus Clicks do at Dallas, which is a six eight hybrid. No, none of the positions are numbers anymore with BL, so they all change numbers. And like it used to be so easy to just go, yeah, Calvin, that's the number four, that's the Makalele role. You just sit there, pal. Now we don't know. Calvin's a six eight four. God knows what it is. Um, it, it's very confusing, but somewhere between a six and an eight for me is what our left sided central midfielder is. That they're, they're further forward than Calvin, they're in that two, but one of them's higher than the other, and the right hand side is higher than this side, exactly. Exactly. So, we're looking at players that are a little bit play a bit deeper, play a bit deeper, yeah. a bit more. So, yeah, it's hard to explain. It? It's not hard to Calvin explain. deep, but not Calvin deep. So, we're looking ideally, at players, for sure. Adam Forshaw yeah. would, would be there if he was fit. Yeah, he would. He would. It's uh, he, so yeah, he so a good job as well. Along that side of things, aren't we? So let's just have a little look at um, some of the players you picked out. So obviously, it's yep. worth mentioning. Um, obviously, Mateus Click stats first of all, mate. Yeah. So Click, obviously, we, we've we've all spoken about him having the injury this season, but his pressing stats are still really high. His shot creating actions are still really high. Obviously, like we said with Rafinha, the, the dribbling and the dribble progression percentage per game, that beating him on both of them isn't going to be terribly difficult because that as much as it is his game, he's expected to press more, he's expected to create with his passing. And we're looking for someone that's actually gonna outdo him on all four categories. And there's only actually one person who again we'd probably argue would maybe could tick a box. On the left wing, could tick a box on the right wing, could tick a box on the attacking central midfield position or this position. And that's Romain Favre. And and, and he can do pretty much everything. I, I would go with... Thank you. That's not nice. That's really mean. Um, yeah, you what probably that mean? me off, Chris. That's not fair. He's <laughs> Andre. That's not a bad one to get. I've had it. I've had it for years, mate. I, I used to get it. When Gary I was... Maguire. Yeah, no. I'm... <laughs> yeah, but you don't get people singing "Mysterious Guilty" wherever you go. Like, if if I go on a night out, people go and ask the DJ to put "Mysterious Girl" on. It really... <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. You I've, mate, I've, had it, I've had it a lot. I've asked people ask me for my autograph and stuff. I'm just like, get lost. Just play along with it, mate. You should play along with it. Well, just put an, an Aussie accent and just be like, "Yeah, I, I'm Peter Andre." <laughs> no. I'm not. I'm not. Say you're his brother. Like, Say you're his better looking brother. Much, much younger. The guy's in his forties, fifties now. I, I, all right, younger brother then. I'm Twenty-eight. Say you're his son. No. Either way, leave me alone. <laughs> we were talking about Ramon Favre. It's just as a sort of called, the Gibson piece around the tray. I'm from Roundy. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Why can't we go back to picking on Oscar? That was that was fun. <laughs> anyway, back to the sentiment. Um, it just caught me by surprise when it came in. I was thinking, what? The Gibson keep beating Andre. I thought, oh yeah, yeah. But but yeah, mate. Let's let's get let's get back onto what we're supposed to be talking about, mate. Let's get back onto that. <laughs> but um, there's some ambitious names on there, man. Which it, it, it yeah. is very. Very promising for Click, the fact that players like Camavinga, yeah. um, Husa Maguire uh, is on there, Jude Bellingham. Um, you know, this is, some... If you go on FB Ref and look at the, the six most comparable players, these are the players that come exactly. up. Like, it's actually mad to think that he puts up these kind of numbers. And a lot of people are talking about, about the likes of Camavinga going for stupid money, like 100 million quid. His transfer market value is 54. Oh, wow, we were talking about him going to Arsenal for 60 mil in the summer. Mad money. So to say that people would say Matt, Matt Click's worth... Would, how much do you think we could sell Click for? I don't think we'd get more than 10, 15 mil. I don't, for sell him. No, I but, don't want to sell Click. But if you had to put a value on him, you, you, you wouldn't imagine anyone paying more than 10, 15 mil for him, would you? Because of his age. That's, yeah. the, that's the thing. Because obviously he's 31 in June. It's going to be difficult to raise that kind of money. But I don't want to sell Click. No chance. No. No, but we we do need somebody. Why do you want to sell click, Phil? No. <laughs> um, we do Phil need... wants to sell click. That's what we need to tell the whole chat now. Yeah, <laughs> you're killing me. No, it, 
he needs he needs help in that position. And whether that's from Adam Forshaw played 60 minutes yesterday, didn't he? Whether exactly. that's, that's positive. That is so good to see, isn't it? Yeah. As much as I, I'll be honest, I do think there's more chance of him leaving this summer than playing for us next season. I'd be shocked. And no, I'm not ruling out plays... Rodrigo de Paul. We did that on the first show. Do you not think he gets on the bench a couple of times between now and the end of the season and comes on? For sure. Yeah. No. Really? In all honesty, no. Really? Um, Bielsa, whenever he's had the opportunity to play for sure, has played him, to be fair. I know, but he's, he's also said that he wants to... With with the likes of Cock and Lorente, maybe he'll rush them back because it's been such a long injury. He's already said he's going to give him at least three or four, preferably five, under-23s games. There's not that many under-23s games left in their season now. He would have to play every minute of the remaining under-23 season to have a chance to get into the first team now. And I just think it's beyond him. I think if, if there's a chance for him to get any minutes, West Brom on the final day. But for me, he had to be involved in the last three or four games. Like Once we've got Tottenham out of the way, we've got what, I don't want to be disrespectful, but we have got an easier run in. Tottenham is our last big challenging game. Yeah, but Tottenham's easy though. Yeah. But easy after game. that, after that, he would have to play every game for me and play well. And, you know, we've seen Berardi back fit for a while now, still not got any minutes. We've seen Cock back for a while now and minus the red card yesterday, all he's had is two minutes. Uh, as a sub in the 95th minute against Fulham and the other the other game he got exactly the same it, I, I can't see Forshaw getting the minutes he'd need to state his case and give an argument for why he needs to be here next season Okay, okay, but fair enough fair enough, I mean, realistically you probably need to look at Forshaw and say is he going to stay fit for a season if, if he comes back? No, but unfortunately. That, that... That can be mitigated. That's that's mitigated with Liam Cooper. Liam Cooper, we don't expect Liam Cooper to play 38 games in a season. No, never... Forshaw's record is so bad with injuries, it's yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? You, it's not on it. years now, isn't it? Exactly. You've got to look at it and say, can you look at him as a reliable squad player purely through availability? Will he be available enough times to be a squad be available to play? You know, if yeah. they need to come in for the main start in 11. So, yeah, that's it's a debatable point, but um. Let's look a little bit more at the um, at the list. Um, I'm, I'm just getting sticky again now. I mean, only Oscar just sounds far, far too close to only fans, doesn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> far too close. Far, far too close. But um, anyone else you want to mention on this list, mate? Yeah, so the, there's... I mean, people might say it's a little bit crazy to put players like Zaniolo, Barella, and obviously Bellingham our Camavinga there in there because of, again, just adding that context. But Zaniolo has obviously been injured all season, so it was kind of hard to do the numbers for him. I had to base those on his career average, which obviously isn't necessarily a fair reflection because some of those will be games from when he first broke through as, what was he, about 16, 17, when he first made his breakthrough at Roma. And then obviously yeah. now getting to a, a level where people actually think quite highly of him. But... He still posts really impressive numbers, um, especially with the dribbling. Um, we we gave a little nod on, I think, the last show, the the left wing show, to Florian Verts at Leverkusen, seventeen years old, unbelievable talent. I think did he make his debut for Germany over the international? He did. He, did. he, he came on. I can't remember yeah. what game it was, but he did come on. It might even have been when Macedonia beat them. You know, it might have been. I might be wrong, but yeah. I, you think, maybe... I think it was, you know. I yeah. think it was. But, um... but obviously, 17 making your international debut in a FIFA World Cup qualifier is, is top quality, man. I, I've watched videos. I, I hadn't heard of him, actually, until I started doing the preparation for these articles. Then I went and started watching videos of him. And it's, it reminds me of what I was saying to you on the last show about watching videos of Cubo in the Real Madrid Academy just fucking breezing past people. Mm. Like, it's the same thing, man. He's, he's so exciting. And again, I, I do think when it comes to these kind of sums of money, they're beyond us. It's not realistic. We're not going to get these kind of players. But we, it, just for context, it's good to see this is the comparison of what, what we should be aiming for now. And obviously, if if we do not need to invest in this position this summer, these kind of lists are still going to be in Victor Orta's books. That yeah. they're not going to get deleted because we don't need them. He's got a list of five players for every position, and you can guarantee if we're not signing them this summer, he's still looking at these players 
And that's a good thing for us to see where we are and what level we're at. That's the players we're after. It's one of them, isn't it? The we're so proactive in these situations. You know, you even have to go back to like last season when Kemal Roof left like yeah. a day before the season started. Eddie yeah. Nketiah turned up two days later. Oh. You know, Bailey Pickup Farrell left. Elan Melier turns up two days later. <laughs> so that's, far ahead. that's the biggest upgrade in history. Yeah, that. that's, I wanted to do that <laughs> one second because in terms of upgrades, it's you know, <laughs> You know what I'm doing. You know what I'm doing there, Phil. Yeah. But yeah, look, it, that was that was only happened because Bailey Pickup Farrell left. But he already knew about Melier, got him through the door, yeah. got that one sorted out, and um, and what a deal it was. But that's yeah. it with Victor Rosa. We've said on this on this show before. You can look at La Liga and you can look at the Bundesliga, and for quality, you probably should be looking there. And obviously, people have asked me about Coop Miners, and I said to Joe last night off air that I think he's been linked with Liverpool now, and obviously with. Um, Go away, Chris. <laughs> with, with Coop Miners, we've heard that Vinaldum's off to Barca, and then that's who they're after to replace Vinaldum if that happens. So, um, with, with oh, you've, I've lost my train of thought, Chris. All I've got is mysterious girl now. <laughs> um, I'm just picturing yeah, Phil in the water there dancing. To, yeah, uh... <laughs> we've got the Portuguese league the Dutch league and the French league, the French league in particular because of the collapse of the TV deal. So the amount of wages, that's that's why we're getting players like Rafinha, Melier, paying nothing for them. We paid 22 million quid in total for Melier and Rafinha and we're paying them pennies in wages yeah. compared to Rodrigo's on 100 and gra 100 grand a week, you know. Rafinha is not. Yeah, honestly, if you look at the books, he's on 100 grand a week, mate. He's on three times what Bamford's on. How? That's what you've got to do to get players like that in. And some might argue it's not been worth that. But, oh, mate, I can't, I can't stop looking at the comments now. I'm going to have to full screen. It just, uh, I can't see <laughs> Peter Andre lyrics just popping up. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say my missus probably dreams of that, but she's actually probably dreaming of that song, but with Alioski underneath the waterfall. Alioski's XG yeah. differential. Yeah. So, um, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Let's just get Roman Favre. I'm off home. It's <laughs> just a fact. <laughs> anyway, I, I, it's all right. Along. It's all right. <laughs> Move along. We'll get there, we'll get there. Um, oh, dearie me, dearie me, some of these comments. Um, right, let's talk about transfers, guys. Let's stop talking about Phil. Let's stop talking about my hat. Let's stop talking about anything else. Let's talk about Roman. How do you, how, how do you actually pronounce it, mate? Is it Fivre? I've got, I'm saying Fivre. Like, as in, like, what Dortmund's old manager. I'm yeah, just but, pretending that's the right way to say yeah, it. That was Lucien Favre. Favre, well, yeah, sorry. It's spelt the same, isn't it? No, no, no. There's an I in it. There's an I in it between the Either A and way, the if, if you say it, confidently, Five, right. Five, right, we'll call say it. it. Say it like you believe the way that you're saying it, and everyone will believe that's the way that you Five, say it. Right. So I'm saying Favre. 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 Whatever it is, who cares? We can spell it, can't we? Yeah, yeah, we can. <laughs> that's, we can. Fine. <laughs> that's enough. Let's talk about the actual player, then. Let's not talk about the... Yeah, anyway... Is he a Pablo replacement for you, potentially? Um, I've always said I thought Rodrigo de Paul was the Pablo replacement, to be honest. And I think Rodrigo de Paul is the sexier, but younger, fitter. Probably, I don't want to say better because we love Pablo. We love everything he did, but championship level. That, you just that, said that, sexier Pablo. then. Oh, he's, Rodrigo de Paul is a sexier. I know, but... He's all about a club legend, there. You, you, you know, you can't, you can't. No do, offense to Pablo Hernandez, like but he, he he doesn't excite the misses, does he? Rodrigo de Paul will excite everybody's misses. Well, that's just a bad. We're talking about oh, a football here, mate. Oh, it matters, he, mate. He excites. I don't want to sound like Roy Keane there, but we're talking about football here. He's a beautiful man, and it's not. He is, just, he is but mate, I've seen like... him run. He's seen him run. He runs like Pablo used to run in the championship, just gliding past people. Beautiful to watch. And in that little lilac kit, you know, it'll get pulses racing. 
You don't look impressed. <laughs> we, we're not even talking about Rodrigo De Paul. You, you're just going into a massive thing about Pablo's looks and that lot. Just Faivre. Talk about Faivre. Don't talk about your love of Rodrigo De Paul. Talk about Faivre. No, you asked me if he's the if he's the replacement for Pablo. I think Rodrigo De Paul is the replacement for Pablo. So that's my answer. No, he's not. Uh, Favre, <laughs> Favre is like he, he could be a replacement for. Dallas, really, when you think about it, he can There's play. no replacement for Dallas. No, 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 no. Don't do this to me. So, Pete, when I first heard about Roman Favre, I heard about a double deal with Favre and DePaul. I mean, Perod. Um, and, and I originally thought that Perod was Brest's first choice left back and Favre was the second choice because I'd seen them both play left back. Then Favre went further up and played left mid. Then he goes over to the right wing. And then every clip that I've actually watched lately, he's playing in the middle. So he's, he can do everything. He is he is a Stuart Dallas in himself. And he's, he's quality as well, you know. He's got he's got the set-piece delivery of Rafinha. If you haven't watched him, he's got Rafinha's set-piece delivery, Pablo's ball-carrying skills. A little bit like we were talking about Samare on the CDM episode. He's got the Vieira-style sort of ball carrying you cannot get him off it so Roman Favre is unbelievable he would be a fantastic signing for Leeds United whatever position you want to put him in you could put him on every transfer show we do he's that good and that that versatile okay okay I'll, I will have a check out of um Roman Favre um let's have a little look at um anyone else you mentioned there um anyone else is obviously Malin um Malinowski has been someone that's been linked with the club yeah before, uh, apparently summer. we went for him last summer. You know, there was a bit, well, an inquiry at the very least that went in last summer, and I think he was a bit out of our price range, which is obviously what transpired with the Rodrigo deal. We got Rodrigo actually for not terrible money, twenty-seven million quid for what is hypothetically Spain's number nine. He's good money when you think Chelsea blasted. Oh, you said it. You said it as well. He's Spain's number nine. He's Spain's number nine. It's something they yes. regularly say. He's not right now, but that's because he had COVID and he hasn't been playing. But we're going to call him Spain's number nine, aren't we? Spain's number nine. Yeah, no, I, I think he's good value for money was Rodrigo. When you think about, we'll see next season. We'll see what he does, how he plays, where he plays. And hopefully, fingers crossed, he, he can be good value for money in the end. And if not, it's the kind of player where if you sell him on, you're not going to make a tremendous loss, I don't think. I, the only reason I emphasise that when you said Spain's number nine, I was just getting a little bit of my own back on Chris Kelly there because I know how much that winds it up, winds him up when we say he's Spain's number nine because it it winds him up, it winds him up. It's all good though, it's all good fun. Um, it seems Chris has had a little bite there in the chat as well, which is which is good to see, which is good to see. But um, really messing, really messing. But one other player I'm just going to mention as well at the bottom, well second from bottom, Mark Rocker, um, yeah. who's actually at Bayern Munich at the moment, this moment in time. Yeah, I I really like I really like him as a player. Um, obviously, at Espanyol yeah. last season really stood out. I saw him actually in the um, the Camp Nou when um, when Barcelona played Espanyol. He was probably one of the best players on the pitch. I think wow, he is he is a proper proper footballer. Not getting game time at Bayern, could no. that work? A season long loan deal for Rocker at Allen Road. I mean, it could. I really like the idea of that personally. Yeah, I mean, it could. I think, like we said, with the right wing position, I don't think this is a priority right now. I, really? I, no, I don't. I mean, it, because it depends what you class as the centre mid and what, what we're looking for. We are looking for, in my eyes, the right centre mid position, which is Rodrigo or Tyler Roberts, whoever's playing there now. As as Chris has said a million times, Tyler could possibly benefit, even though he's playing well at the moment, he could benefit from alone in the Championship or he could benefit from being a squad player for us. But quality wise next season you would like to think that the areas of the squad that are going to be improved obviously left back we all know that then for me it's the more attacking of the two center mids that i think needs improving because the signing that hasn't worked is rodrigo and rodrigo maybe he's not working because he wants to play up front and if he wants to play up front he's going to have to get a hell of a lot better at the pressing stuff than he is at the moment because bamford's a hell of a lot better at that than he is so I, I would say we're looking at left back, right centre mid, the more attacking of the two, and then back up for Calvin. I think they're the three top priorities, and then the the rest I think depends on who leaves. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. But um, but yeah, I still I dis I do disagree though. I think in terms of 
an actual passing number eight in terms of someone who can get on the ball and actually just play kind of 50, mm. 55 passes a game. High success rate, a bit like an Adam Forshaw, but not graded yeah. profile of an Adam Forshaw. Yeah. I really like the idea of a Mark Rocker, to be honest, in this squad. Yeah. When I looked through your list earlier on today, I thought, Rocker, that is, that is, a, that is yeah. one. That there's, a lot, there's a lot that we've done on the, um, the CDM show that could easily go in this list. Like Samare could go back in this list as well. Um, I think Samare is one that I'd happily blow whatever kind of money you want to spend on him. I'd, I'd happily push to 35 million quid for a player like Samare, happily. Exactly. Let him, exactly. Let, him, let him do those, both of those jobs. I mean, other players on this list that I'd want to talk about, I think Kerim Demirbay would be fantastic. He's a bit more experienced, but obviously the player that we're comparing him to here is Click. Click's the oldest player in our squad. Him and Cooper are pretty much the ones that you imagine are going to be phased out first. So when it does come to replacing Mateus Click, I think experience-wise, if you look at players like Kerem Demirbay, I mean, Zielinski is probably at the moment a little bit out of our price range. But players like Zielinski and Demirbay are, are the kind of people I would say are ready-made repla replacements for our first team now. Um, but then obviously when it comes to long-term, I've, I've put quite a few options in here for the long-term. So obviously like we're talking Florian Verts and all, Bellingham even, Although obviously I think price wise we, we'd struggle to get quite a few of those. It'd have to be a loan for Bellingham, but yeah, it's of at Dortmund. Yeah, it it depends with Bellingham as well. It depends on what the ceiling for him is because at the moment I didn't expect him to play as much as he is at Dortmund. And Dortmund, as much as maybe they'll try and prove me wrong this summer, they are notoriously a selling club. Um, where does he go next? Does he go to someone bigger? There aren't actually that many clubs that are bigger these days, I don't think. In Germany, there's only Bayern. And then outside of Germany, you've got a few Premier League clubs, a couple of Spanish clubs and one Italian club. There's nowhere else. We all else. know that Bayern will sell, buy all of Dortmund's best talent at some yes. point. At some point it happens. Yeah. What well, do you think they'll get Haaland then? <laughs> uh, it wouldn't, honestly wouldn't surprise me if Bayern got Haaland, Sancho and Bellingham this summer. You know, knowing no. Bayern in terms of what they do, but um, oh, does me head in, does me head in. It ruins the Bundesliga as well, that. But anyway, it's a different, that's a different, um, that's a whole <laughs> yeah, different it also, it, it does ruin it as a, as a competition, I think, when Bayern do that. But that's a di totally different conversation, that one. Um, so let's um, let's have a look at any other names on there. I want to just have a little look at obviously Fabian Delph, you've mentioned on the list there. Um, yeah, it was one of them where it. We, we did the first show and then I just, I think I've sent it to you privately. The I've been going back through every show, reading all the comments and any suggestion, I've just thrown them in where I can. Just it, I personally wouldn't have him on that list. Um, Fabian Delph, outside of our Premier League years, one of the best players I've seen in the flesh, to be honest, in, in a Leeds kit. Um, I thought the way he carried the ball back in the League One days, I know it's League One, but he was so young. He there was a few goals that he scored the year before he left where he, he ran about 70 yards up the pitch and bang one in the top corner. I don't think he's that player anymore. Um, he could be a left back. He could be a CDM. He's got the versatility. He's got the experience. But for me, he's, he's not a Leeds United player anymore and he's not a Bielsa player anymore. I, I don't think he's got the legs for it, to be honest. Jed does notorious have a very good left foot, though. He does have a very good left foot, to be fair. Uh, just, just responding to that comment before. But, um, well, this is an interesting one. Obviously, it's slightly... Because we kind of discussed the sentiment situation. Faivre is number one, numero uno for us. Um, I've got to say, I'm personally putting Mark Rocker in second. Very yeah. close second, though. I really like Rocker. Um, what about this one, mate? Theoretically, just take no. it out. Okay, say, for example, okay... Rodrigo leaves yeah. this summer. Yeah. Atletico Madrid, Sevilla, someone in La Liga comes calling. Rodrigo wants to play week in, week out. He goes. I'm not saying it's going yeah. to happen, but if it did happen, <coughs> Timmy Abraham, would you take him? I, I wouldn't, no. Um, you wouldn't? No. You wouldn't take Tammy. What for? Play centre forward. So you're getting rid of Bamford? Not necessarily, not necessarily. But to, um, to rotate with Bamford or provide competition for Bamford. Competition, rotate. I, I really, I really like Abraham. To be honest, I think he's a different type of player to Bamford. A little bit more pace in behind. 
good in the air. I think he offers a different threat to Bamford. I know, I know this might I be love a bit... Bamford. I, I would not want Bamford replacing per se, but if Rodrigo did leave, yeah, I'd quite happily take Abraham and say, as a, at the very least, at backup. I think maybe this might be a bit of a narrow-minded view, and I, I understand obviously Chelsea spent three hundred million quid or something daft in the summer, and they've got Timo Werner now, Giroud still there, and he's for me he's their best striker still. Well, Abraham's still but, their top scorer. That's worth mentioning. How many has he scored though? But he's still a top. He's hardly played. He's, he's nowhere, still a top he's, scorer. He's nowhere near the England squad. Absolutely nowhere. They're talking about him going out on loan to try and get anywhere near the England squad for the World Cup because he can't get near it for the Euros. He's nowhere near Ollie Watkins, mate, for getting in that squad. And I, I just don't see why we go for him. Well, that's only because he's not playing week in, week out. That's the only. There's, there's... But why is he not playing week in, week in, week in, week out? Then you tell me. He's top. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think I don't think it's the kind of person that we will go for either. But toss up between Tammy Abraham and Danny, Danny Ings. Danny Ings all day. Really? Yeah, of course. Danny Ings I... is quality, mate. But it's, and it's, I, it's I, isn't going to come, come to Leeds. Either way, Abraham, I don't the only think... reason Abraham could happen is because he's not playing week in, week out at Chelsea. Ings, I just can't see that happening, to be honest. I can't see Tammy. I don't think Leeds at all this summer, last summer, next summer. We're not shopping in the Premier League, mate. That's not where we're going to do our business. Well, Ivan Tony. Tony. Yeah, there's more chance of that. We, we spoke when we left the Championship about the cream of the Championship, didn't we? Wherever that phrase came from. And I just, I think if, if Leeds are going to buy anybody, no matter what position it is, I think you're more likely to see it come from League One. Oh, sorry, League Un. I'm talking French League, not the not third League division one. of England. Um, Liga or Liga Nos in Portugal. Maybe the Eredivisie, I think that's a bit more unlikely. But those two leagues for me is where I think we're going to buy our players. And failing that, it's going to be one of Europe's top five leagues. So you're going to be looking at Bundesliga, La Liga. I don't see us shopping in the Premier League because you play you play a premium because they're Premier League players. That we are we're too good at business now. I think Victor Orta is too savvy to go shopping in the Premier League. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Well, it's been another fun show, guys. We're getting on to just about that hour mark now. Smash that like button, guys. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. I mean, Phil, is there anything else you want to add before we uh, before we? Say uh, goodbye and um, I could just give you a bit of mysterious girl to play us out, yeah? Yeah, yeah go no. on, go on. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> nah, mate, I'm, I'm just gutted we're not playing again now until next Monday night. Uh, I'm ready for the next one already. I'm, I'm, should I watch City in the Champions League over the coming days and see how knackered they are for a bit of my leads? Feed. I, I need something again now. After... I I actually kind of want City to batter Dortmund just so it makes our <laughs> win look even better. You know, to beat Dortmund yeah. like four 0 or something. I, I think that just makes us look even better than what we actually yeah. are. Yeah. No. I I feel like this week is what every week should be like. I'm going to be climbing the walls over the summer. You want Monday night football. You want Tuesday and Wednesday. You want Champions League. Thursday you want Europa League, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday more Premier League football. I'm loving it. I, I'm just annoyed that we have to wait until next Monday for our turn, especially after yesterday. I, I'm, I'm excited for Liverpool now. I already sort of fancied that one out of these three games. I thought that was the one we could take something from. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens next. Jackie's back. Rodrigo hopefully fit. Anything could happen. Exactly, exactly. Good you? things come to those who wait. That's all I'm saying. It's, yeah. If it's worth waiting for, wait for it. Leeds United vs Liverpool next Monday night. And plenty of all these TV content is coming up in the next coming days. Pretty much, well, it will be a video every single day. Monday night football tomorrow. Leeds United lasted on Tuesday. Pro probably going to have the quiz on Wednesday. And then a bit of Liverpool build up from Thursday onwards. And, uh, and yeah, going to leave it there anyway, guys. It's been great fun. We're going to do enough one of these, hopefully at some point next week as well. And yeah, and uh, big thanks to Phil as always. He's put together a fantastic piece here, two fantastic pieces. Do you want us to just let us know, mate, where we can find them? Yeah, so go to my Patreon channel, guys. It's the same as my Twitter handle, Phil Miles ninety two. If you can't find it on Patreon, just type that in. Just obviously, just go to my Twitter page, and it's on there anyway. So 
um there's plenty of stuff still to come i'll be posting more articles ready for the next episode i don't think we've decided on a position yet but we'll be doing two more positions obviously there's only a few left and a little sneak preview for all of you that you might not even want to hear because there was an odd number i had to do a 12th article which means that i have also done one on the manager position so that could be the one that oh here he goes as he's doing it again he's he's doing doing it again. I, knew nothing about this. I knew nothing about this yes yeah, so i've done a manager one i, I thought I'd so is steve it. evans at the top of the list mate is what is steve evans at the top of the list no but neil warnock is <laughs> no okay. i'm joking i'm joking no i want pecking bottom back don't you oh yeah yeah mate. definitely definitely yeah, no, but uh, we'll manager, leave it there anyway um yeah, I mean, it's interesting names coming in already, to be fair. He's on the list. Is he on the list? Is he on the list? He's on the list, yeah. Is Pep on the list? No. Okay, okay. Is Heckenbottom on the list? <laughs> no. Well, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there because I'm just going to keep guessing, <laughs> keep going to guess it. But um, anyway, we're going to leave it there, guys. It's been great fun, as always. Hope you've had a great Sunday night and a great weekend. Enjoy tomorrow when lockdown kind of eases a little bit a little bit easing but um keep checking out all these to me we'll keep you going throughout this lockdown and the rest of the season see you later guys <laughs> <laughs>